Now for our story. Tonight, in his house on 11th Street, Ben Calvert opens the door of his study, flicks on the light. Kit. Good heavens. What's the matter, Dad? What are you doing? Sitting here in the dark. Oh, nothing. Just thinking. You gave me quite a jolt. I thought you were upstairs. I'm sorry if I startled you, Dad. Oh, it's all right. But why didn't you turn on the lamps? Oh, I don't know. I hadn't even noticed how dark it was, to tell you the truth. Well, your thoughts must have been pretty far away then. I guess. Kit, I don't know what's the matter with you. I thought once the divorce was over, once you got custody of the child, that you'd begin to snap out of it. Be more like your old self. Instead, you seem to be crawling more and more into your shell. I don't like it. It's not healthy. Healthy? Is there anything healthy about this house? There's nothing wrong with this house. It's the best place in Wakefield. No, don't be so little, Dad. I was thinking of the feeling in the place. You and Jesse, all the bitterness in both of you. What about yourself? You and Jesse. You never say a decent word to each other. No, I know. I'm not defending myself. But you asked me why I haven't been in a more cheery mood since the divorce, and I was trying to give you my reasons. Well, I'm sure I don't know what you want or expect. It seems to me I've done everything a man could to make his daughter happy. You really believe that? Certainly. If you can tell me where I failed. Oh, Dad. I got you the best lawyer in Chicago. He won your case for you. Yes. That is, he won it for you. It was to your own interest, too, remember. You have custody of your son? Have I really? What do you mean? You know what I mean, Dad. How can you say I have custody of my child? When I told you I wanted to go away for a while, take the baby with me, you raised the roof. That's another story. Naturally, I won't have you dragging my grandson around all over the country. I'm thinking of his welfare. You know, Dad, you're an amazing person. Sometimes I can't decide whether you do these things consciously or whether you actually convince yourself of what you want to believe. I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, whenever you want something very much for yourself, you always try to make it appear that you're doing it for someone else's welfare. Then, if they don't like it, you can always accuse them of being ungrateful. Kit, if you Look can't... at the present situation, for instance. You have several reasons for wanting me to stay here with the baby, and none of them has anything to do with what I want for myself. Maybe you don't know what's best for you. There you go. That's just what I mean. I happen to know exactly what would be best for me. To get away, out of this house, to have some peace of mind. But you don't care about that. You want me here because my being here drives Jessie into a frenzy, and you enjoy seeing her suffer. It's your way of striking back at her for whatever wrongs you feel she's done you. I'll admit I don't mind giving Jessie a few uneasy moments. She has it coming to her. And the other reason you want me here is for your own ego. Because of the baby. You want to shape him into a little replica of yourself. So that he'll grow up with your ideas, your approach to living. That's only natural. He's my grandson. He belongs here with me. And if you were sensible, you'd realize that the best thing for you is to stay right here and settle down too. We've won, Kit. Can't you get it through your head? Can't you realize it? You have nothing whatever to fear now. You're secure. But Ben Calvert might not have been so sure of himself had he known what Angus McKillop, Bill Mead's attorney, had in his pocket at this moment. Angus, who has just walked up the steps to Bill's little cabin in the Wakefield Auto Court, knocked on the door. Good evening, lad. Why, hello, Mr. McKillop. Come in. Thank you. Hey, will. I'm not interrupting you, I hope. No, I should say not. I'm glad to have a little company. Uh, sit down, won't you? So, this wee place is your castle, eh? Yeah. That's not much, but I'm used to it. That's all a man needs. Clean, tidy. I suppose you're wondering why I came. Uh, well, uh, uh, never mind. Uh, I'll tell you. Okay. Uh, but first, can I fix your drink? Hey, hey, you can. Swell. Uh, uh, it'll take just a second. That's just what I need for the night's work. Oh, the loony, crazy, nonsensical thing. What's that? Oh, oh nothing like nothing. I, I have a bad habit of talking to myself. The years are creeping up on me, no doubt. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I haven't got any ice. Ice, yes. Now, what would a man be wanting with ice to water his good whiskey? <laughs> okay. Now, here we are. Say when. Uh, uh, when? Uh, just a nip, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, I guess all the stories I've heard about the drinking prowess of the Scotsman haven't been exaggerated. <laughs> yep. Here's your good health. 
Yeah. yeah. Nothing like a little swallow or something to warm a man's in it. It's a chilly night out. I may have a long wait where I'm going. Well, oh, you have to go somewhere when you leave here? That I do. And like as not, it's a wild goose chase at that. Me, a respectable lawyer, stealing about in all hours, meeting people in the dark. Not. That's what I call it. <laughs> What's all this about? I don't know myself. That's what irks me. Here. Read this, lad. Okay. Dear Mr. McKillop, regarding one of your clients, I believe I have some information which might be of interest to you. This client is Bill Mead. If you will be at the square opposite the courthouse on the north side tomorrow evening at 9.30, you will hear something which may prove very valuable to you in this case. Well, I'll be done. Is that all you have to say? What's well, not signed? That's funny. I wonder who... So do I. I've been wondering since yesterday when the thing came. Where did it come from, Mr. McKillop? Did you notice the postmark? A fine lawyer I'd be if I'd missed a thing like that. Of course I took notice. Well, where did it come from? From Wakefield. Wait. Oh, gosh, this is the strangest thing I ever... What do you make of it, Mr. McKillop? Uh, nothing so far. It may be a prank. Or it may be much more than that. I don't know. But I intend to find out if there's anything to be found out. A fine fool I'd look sitting there on a park bench waiting for a mysterious stranger and like a silly detective in a murder story. Oh, gosh, I'm, I'm sorry you have to go through all this. If you'd rather back out... What? After giving my word to Mary Lane that I'd fight through to the better end? If the end's to be better, that is. We hope it won't be. Well, I had Mary told me about talking to you. And it's swell of you to be willing to help. I mean, I do appreciate your continuing on with the case. You have Mary Lane and my conscience to thank for that. But never fear, I've given my word. I, I'll stick to it. I know you will. Aunt Mary feels very hopeful now. She says when you make up your mind to win a case... Don't you... raise your hopes too high. The higher you go, the further you'll have to topple from. Oh, yeah, but... But even so, I feel better than I have for weeks. Because if anybody can win custody of that son of mine for me, I know you can. I guess I don't need to tell you how much I'm hoping. No, you needn't tell me again, lad. You've, you've made your feelings in the matter clear enough. It's not that I blame you. I know very well how you look at it, but... What with your Ben being in charge of Ben Calvert, it would be enough to give one bad dreams, thinking what that man would be teaching the boy as he grew up. Oh, that's what's been driving me nuts, thinking about it. It would be swell if there really were something in this letter business. Something which actually would help. I, I can't imagine what it could be. How could anyone know anything that would make any difference? I mean, anything that we haven't already thought about. That's what I don't know, lad. But I'll know very soon. Well, it's ten past nine. I better be going. Well, uh, thanks for letting me know what's happened. <laughs> I'm sure curious to find out what this is all about. Uh, will you let me know as soon as you can? Of course I will, lad. You, you've got a right to know what kind of foolishness this is, isn't. So I'll gather my long black coat about me and steal forth to the appointed spot. <laughs> well, good night, Mr. McKillop. And good luck. Good luck. I will need it. In spite of McKillop's warning not to let his hopes rise too much, and in spite, too, of the lawyer's tone when he said, good luck, we'll need it, Bill Meade couldn't help feeling a new rise of optimism. Perhaps, after all, the mysterious letter would prove to be helpful in its suit for custody of the baby boy he believed to be his own. But who could have written it, Bill wondered. Well, he'd have to wait for the answer to that until his next talk with Angus. <laughs> 